Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Still Rise and Shine. And we're coming to you live from Uyo, the capital city of Akwaibum State, Nigeria. We've had several conversations. One way to catch up on all that is to follow us across all social media platforms, all of which you can find at spectrumtv.ng. We have our conversations driving heavily on Twitter at SpectrumT Online. At this time, we want to move straight into our focus conversation. The misuse of public offices. This is something that has become a big saga. Um, the EFCC boss was recently suspended and part of the allegations against him was also for the misuse of office. But there is a big man on the block whose head has been chopped and that is the Bokuchua saga. That's what we'll be looking into and all other responsibilities around public offices. To dissect this conversation with us this morning is Barrister Clifford Thomas, who is the Executive Director Foundation for Civic Education, Human Rights and Development um, Advancement Experts. Good morning, Sam. Thanks for joining us this morning. Well, good morning, Uya, and good morning, uh, Janice. It's nice being on set this morning, and um, the topic is particularly of very strong interest to us as Nigerians and to the international community. The task to make Nigeria better must be done by all of us. And this is part of the task we're talking about. Yeah, definitely. And I think one um, thing that has been on the lips of every Nigerian as a result of this Bokachua issue and saga is the questioning of the judicial system. You know, um, how devoid is it of some kinds of interferences? But just to give a background now, of course, in his valedictory address, our former, distinguished former member, Adamu Bukachua, confessed to influencing the decisions of his wife, Zaina Bukachua, while she was serving as George and President of the Court of Appeal. Now, Bukachua, who is 83 years old, uh, a chieftain of the ruling APC was presented, re represented, I beg your pardon, Bochi North Senatorial District in the Ninth Assembly. Uh, he also confirmed infringing on his wife was freedom and independence encroached upon while she was in office. Now, there's also a rejoinder to this particular comment because um, a couple of um, days ago or a couple of hours ago, we also saw him come out to say that, um, you know, try to take back that comment that it was uh, quoted out of uh, context in which he was trying to put forward as well. But it's a big problem as we speak. There's been a lot of call for probing. There's been a lot of call to look into the judicial system and see how we can clear the judicial system of interferences. And I know that one thing that has made it look as if the, 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 the pendulum is swinging to the judiciary now is because of the presidential uh, election tribunal. A lot of questions are beginning to raise how, uh, 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 you know, how um, authentic will the judgment from that particular uh, tribunal come up. But let's look at misuse of public office. Well, it's a very sad thing that um, uh, this happened. Uh, the misuse of public office and abuse of public office over the years uh, has been very inherent with us, has been there with us. But when God pushes a man to confess mm. like this, we have to celebrate God. God is wonderful. And he made a, an outgoing senator to confess that he had influenced the decisions of his wife on, on his seat as the president of the Court of Appeal. Mm -hmm. And um, I think at this time, around, this time, we need to call, the wife need to be invited for questioning the husband must be invited for questioning and then we must also review those identified cases where he exerted influence on i am a victim i studied very hard did my research very well did my processes went to court and a certain level of government in this country influenced the court of appeal against me the principle of law were very clear but they turned it upside down and I'm talking about the 5,000 teachers case in the Court of Appeal mm. in Calabar. So we have suffered. You see a brilliant lawyer who does a good job and at the end of the day, because there are extraneous influences here and there, they end up uh, turning judgment against them. 
and it's happening every day it's happening everywhere mm. the judiciary ought to be called to question it i am putting it to them that the judiciary must be called to account for the decisions they have taken over some cases some some lawyers will not agree with me but i am saying it's a very painful thing i'm a victim i know of a couple of persons who have been victims where it is alleged that some judicial officers may have been bribed mm. may have been given money or extraneously influenced to turn decisions against the will of justice justice requires that the principles of law must be followed but where there are influences of any kind and the, the 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 will of justice is not followed with respect to the principles of law the decided cases and all of that that it becomes a problem but why are you even why must you even prepare and go to court but if there's you a can denial influence? here there is a, re a denial here mm -hmm. as a rejoinder. look if the rejoinder the, the, the man is a letter they sent he now understands the implication when the senate president then lawan was advising him it, it it thought he could say things and get applause he was trying to play to the gallery mm -hmm. and god pushed him to play to the gallery to expose himself expose his wife expose the judiciary i am i am i am i'm a lawyer and being a lawyer does not give me the right to protect what is bad what is bad is bad what is not good is bad so when he came out to say that oh he was quoted out it was a live program it was beam live. A lot of persons recorded it. Hmm. He couldn't have been quoted out of context. Now he's, his he words that the were Senate exact. President got in his way of explanation. He said what? That the Senate president got in his way while no, he was explaining. No, the Senate president actually plays what we call a caveat. I was trying to warn him. Do not go there. He had already spilled the base. Exactly. His introduction was enough for us to know what was happening or what was happening and what had happened mm. so he couldn't come back to tell us again that look he was co who quoted him out of context mm. I, I think those are his exact words mm. Mm. i think something else we want to look at as an aside to this whole abuse of office thing is having to for instance having a couple being minders of of capital offices um, because it looks like this is something we have not observed over time. But this particular confession now is also revealing, um, what would I call it, a leeway that we need to block. There's something called conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. I am a senator, my wife is a judge. One of us must relinquish our position. Exactly. One of us must relinquish that position. Because as a politician, assuming i'm a senator or a politician it means that i might go to court i am holding public office public trust my wife is a judge mm -hmm. and president of the court of appeal for crying out loud it means that all appeals that are coming with respect to political matters that i will influence my wife to pick justices that will be pliant to what she wants to what i want mm -hmm. and we are saying that Having seen this as a principle, we should put it two principles principally in place. One, if you are holding a public office on elective principle, and your wife, who is holding another very sensitive office, particularly the one that has to do with the public, yeah. one of you must relinquish your position. The second application I want to make is that whoever is appointed into public office you must withdraw all your children from private schools and put them in public schools why would you ask them to do that they have to because your job is to mine public institutions public trust is conferred on you if you had your children in private universities withdraw them and put in public universities so that you can also help to monitor those schools each particular appointee in this country should adopt a school should adopt a school mm -hmm. and if you are involved with the judiciary you must also adopt uh, meet with the chief judge of the state and see how to help put those courts in place some courts you can't sit in some courts they are worse than a leaking basket a basket is a leaking entity itself but it is worse than a leaking basket you enter the court when rain falls it it beats the judge mm -hmm. 
it beats those the lawyers in the bar. Are they no? Are they no funds that have been set aside to? No, there are funds, the but we can't see the fund. This is part of the problem we are saying that conflict of interest as 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 pervaded the whole place such that we cannot get real value for service. Go and check the budget. If we are to do a budget tracking, how much goes to the acquired state judge? How much is approved for the acquired state judiciary? How much is eventually released? And how much of that release fund are used for what and what and what projects? Do we get value for service? I think another question that uh, Nigerians are asking is to what extent did the former appeal court president even willingly allow her husband's uh, influence and what were her motivations now? Well, those are very private issues. Mm -hmm. I may not know. I may not be privy to them. But we are saying that bring back all the political cases and beyond political cases. Let the husband be questioned. Let him mention some of those cases. And even some of the cases we suspect the Court of Appeal had decided on which was which went against the principles of justice, they should be reviewed. A special panel set up by the National Judicial Council should be set up to, to review all these cases. Now, don't you think that that will be stepping on a lot of serious toes? What do you mean? What toes? Are those toes uh, uh, more sensitive than the because interests sure, of Nigeria. I'm sure that's why the former Senate President Ahmed Lawan had to stop him. Let the them, let them review it. Let it affect anybody. Will it affect you? Do you have? A, did you have a case in the? In the we we the are also we, we are also looking at how this is. Look, going let's to all stop influence. protecting our own teeth mm. and condemning their own teeth. Mm. We are we are looking at how all of this is going to be affecting the public as we go forward because now yes. we have employed new hands on the saddle of responsibility mm -hmm. and we will begin to see this abuse of office. Like I mentioned in our introduction, um, Abdul Rashid Bauer was also um, suspended from his public office because of misuse of office. Mm. Like for, for instance, now what I even want you to do for us? Suspected misuse mm, of, of office. office. Allegedly, so. it will be investigated. Mm -hmm. And once it is confirmed, it will be uh, arraigned. Mm -hmm. So w when we are talking about misuse of office, in what ways can we say that our public office holders misuse the opportunity given to them so that we know what the expectations are of them and what, you know, the, the well, population you, you is have, looking you at You have succinctly distinguished it because abuse of office is a generic thing. Mm -hmm. In private, in the private sector, office is abused. In the public sector, office is abused. But it is worse in the public sector because you are conferred with public trust. You are given the opportunity to hold the country or to hold, run your office with respect to uh, a particular uh, objective. Mm -hmm. Incidentally, you now use it for private gain. Mm -hmm. That itself is corruption. Any abuse of office is corruption. It's captured in the white spectra of the definition of corruption mm -hmm. so once you are given public office it should be part of our laws that any abuse of public office is a criminal offense and then they should uh, specify the, the terms of imprisonment the type of punishment mm -hmm. that should be given we have situations where in NDDC in the MASA in FIRS in a couple of federal institutions you notice that um, offices the, in, the 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 information about abuse of office is rife unfortunately even those who are accused they refuse to step aside for investigations to be done mm -hmm. they sit tight they refuse to leave nigeria is changing i tell you the truth i can feel it i can sense it and i know that this country will be better than it was president bola metunuba has come in he may not be the best and he has never claimed to be the best. But the decisions he is taking are pro people decisions. Are decisions that have come out from the agitations of the people. Mm. But some other person may have sat there and nothing will happen. Uh, Buhari was there. They accused Bawa of abusing office. He didn't do anything. Mm. The group managing director of uh, NNPC, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they accused him. Nothing happened. But we are sure. In the coming weeks, they will arrest him. They'll suspend him from office. They'll get him arrested and investigate him. We are sure that somebody mentioned FIRS. Yes, we want to know. 
there is an agency which collects money on behalf of NCC, National Communications Commission. Mm. Over these uh, bank charges, your, mm. your what, what they charge you from, the 10, 10 naira they take from more than 150 million Nigerians on a daily basis. Where is that money going to? If it's 10, 10 naira from 150 million naira, you're talking of 1.5 billion every, every day. Not every month. Mm. Mm. 1.5 billion times 30 Multiply. days. That comes to more than 45 billion naira. Where is mm. where are these monies going to? So, so obviously a lot of probing a lot of probings need to be done. It must be done as a way the to I neck I neck chairman and I neck must be probed. But, but, but Barista, we, we have an issue where it looks like office holders are becoming bigger than the offices. Exactly. That Look at the story because of uh, God in usually, Yes, it starts with an introduction of we have suspended with the intention they, to they investigate and probe. God in MFLA. God in MFLA today is like a common criminal on the street that have been arrested. He, look, the information coming out. They are singing like canary birds. They are singing. They are telling Nigerians where they where they hid the money, where they got the money from. How would you imagine God in MFLA telling Nigerians to return re, return old Nara notes within one week or uh, within two weeks? They told him, okay, let the old Nara notes subsist with the new Nara notes. You are telling us you have destroyed our money. How did you destroy the money? How did you destroy more than three trillion Nara that we were returned to CBN? And you are telling us stories. So, so those people who became or who assumed they were bigger than institutions is because of their godfathers and persons who gave them authority or power I th I think we to just, exist. We were this having that interview this morning. Sorry, sir. We were having that interview this morning. And I said, for the case of Godwin and Mephiele, if we want to even begin to investigate and probe him, then we have to probe the immediate past government. Of president, uh, uh, former president. No, you uh, have to. Muhammad you have Buhari, to prove because it was as the if he was president. funding the embassy. He does not have immunity again. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. You must probe, and what I see, see Mr. President doing now is to probe the little fries who contributed to the grand finale of corruption that killed Nigeria. The economy of Nigeria is not bad. Under the, the, the administration no, the of former president. of Nigeria president. is not bad. It is comatose. It is dead. Mm. So you have to put some remedial measures and some permanent measures in place. It is not just bad, but it is comatose. It is in its worst shape. Beyond investigation and probing, do we have what it takes as a country to judge this and prosecute these persons? Because and secure convictions. Yes, and exactly. secure convictions. Everything lies on President Muhammad, on President uh, Bola Ahmed Tunubu. But Nigeria, let me tell you, Ahmed Tunubu is an activist. For crying out loud. He's an activist. He mixes with activists. He hears what they are saying. He hears what the people are saying. He's a CSO man. He's a civil society person. So he understands what civil society is saying. That's why I see a lot of heads rolling. I see heads. It, 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 it may be possible that Bola Ahmed Tunubu, presiding over Nigeria, will sweep the audience table and sweep himself. <laughs> in case he didn't come uh, through the right means yes. into authority, mm. he might tell you, look, I am not going to protect myself. Mm. I am going to let this thing be done the way it should be done. Let okay. Nigeria be good for once. Okay. Um, let's even look at, you know, mechanisms we can put in place to curb this kinds of issue. Mm. Especially because I, I think the Bokuchua issue is a very serious issue. The let's begin to look at mechanisms. Conduct, the code of conduct oath, the oath they took and the forms they filled. We have not followed them up. Somebody will come in and tell you he has 300 cows or 3,000 cows. And these are cows that have not produced and have not died. And you want us to believe it. Somebody will come in and tell tells you that he has his total asset is 150 million naira. And at the end of his four or eight year tenure, he has 200 billion assets and everything worth more than 200 billion naira. Directly and the ones he's keeping indirectly through front. And then Nigeria, there are no consequences. There, let there be consequences. I see the president pushing for consequences of mm. actions. I have said he may not be the, the best person. He may have come into... Yeah, Adwa, President Musa, uh, 
Omaru Yaredwa came out and admitted that the process that brought me in was flawed. It was fraudulent, yeah. And that made him a sense in this country. I, th I think something else I want you, I really want you to give voice to is the, is the push by the NLC TUC asking that going forward with all of the fuel subsidies uh, issue, they still want to go on on their strike. But they are saying they, they want the federal government to move minimum wage from 30,000 naira all the way up to 150,000 naira. We are looking at public office misuse. And it feels like the first explanation is, oh, we don't have that kind of money to pay salaries to, you know, citizens at 150,000. What are your thoughts? If we take the monies paid to some of our public office holders as benefits, as salaries and everything, do you think it's sustainable to pay 150,000 naira as minimum wage? Mm -hmm. NLC, I don't know whether they are from Cameroon operating in Nigeria. That strike, let them proceed on any strike, it will fail. Nigerians are going to gang up against N labor this time around. Who is labor protecting? How many are they? What's the percentage of, of labor of the employed compared to the unemployed in this country? Big question. They are actually less than less than five percent, and you want us to spend one hundred and fifty million as minimum wage for less than five percent of people? When Pai Modu, late Pai Modu, was labor leader, he was speaking for the unemployed. He was speaking for Nigerians. He wasn't speaking for just the employed. They have made NSA to use. They have made uh, labor to appear like a court group, where it is only their interests that they serve self-serving interests, very eccentric. That we cannot pay. The, the country cannot pay, cannot afford to pay 150 million now. But one, that is not one, an 150,000. 150. Now, what about those in the upper echelon? You are talking of the cleaner, 150,000. You have not put props in place to make even 10,000 naira meaningful and have value in this country. We need electricity, constant electricity. We need to revive our manufacturing base so that we can employ more people, provide more services. Simple elementary economics in demand and supply. When supply is high, the price come down. When demand is high, the price go up. So if we do elementary economics, we'll be able to see that about how many are we? About 240 million. 10% of that is 24 million. 5% of that is about 12 million. Do we have, in all honesty, up to 12 million Nigerians that are working, that, working. Working, that are working, who are members of the NLC TUC? So let them stop being unreasonable. Let them start their strike. I will also lead a strike. I will lead a protest against them. Let them go on strike. I dare them to go on strike. I will be on the streets also. All right. I think um, this is the much we will be able to take. But um, it's quite surprising that you're, you're very good with your numbers, the way you calculate the millions. I did, I, did, uh, I did mental <laughs> maths. I didn't do use calculator. The highest we used was Abacus. I don't know what education has turned into. You buy a fuel at filling station and the girl brings out calculator and starts calculating. What nonsense is that? What is our education turning into? Thank you so into? much, yeah. Barry Suckley. I am very Thomas. angry this morning. Obviously, Obviously you can so. see it. And, you, you and can... it's good for us as Nigerians this morning. And I'm very sure you people also use calculators. Oh it's my God. Shame. We want to say a big thank you to you before we come under your sledgehammer this morning. <laughs> Thank you so much, Barista for Thomas Esquire, of course, Executive Director, Foundation for Civic Education, Human Rights and Development Advancement. Let me advise Nigerians, please, yes. wherever you're watching us from, always ask questions. Don't fail to ask questions. All these surrogates in power, they will make mistakes in answering your questions in a hurry. Ask questions. Let us know the questions we'll ask them. Of course. Definitely. Thank you so and much. And we also demand yeah. answers too mm. from those questions. Yes. And just to piggyback on that, a good way to ask questions is to get on our, on our Twitter handle, Spectrum T Online. Mm -hmm. Ask your nationally relevant questions. And we'll always bring the likes of Barry Stark Clifford to break down and give you some of the answers he's brought this morning. We love you so much. Thank you for being a part of Rise and Shine this morning. My name is Uyai Anirkan. My name is Janice Cobham. We we'll had you over now to Sports Central with uh, Blyden Blyden, Blyden Ukem and Isaac Isaac. Stay good and see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.